equity gainer right now is M&M. So the stock is up almost about 4 odd percent and brokerages continue to be bullish on M&M post the results yesterday. So 4% rally there. CLSA has actually raised its target price to 2074. <coughs> Nomura is one of the most bullish on the street at 2143 and HSBC is at 1900. Of course, there are some concerns. M&M has gone ahead and lowered their FY24 tractor volume growth guidance from flat to negative 5%. Also, the SUV order book has fallen sharply and that is one big concern that the street has. The order book is down about 21% year on year. So, two factors, right? Extended El Nino in 2025 and perhaps a slowdown in SUV demand are some concerns. But for now, the street is looking forward and uh, the stock is up almost about 4 odd percent. In fact, my colleague Parikshit is in conversation with Anish Shah, the MD and CEO at MM. So, let's cut across to that conversation. Well, the Mahindra Group has announced its Q3 results with consolidated revenue coming in at uh, 35,299 crore, up 15%, and profit after tax up 34% at 2,658 crore. The company has seen strong performance across businesses except for Tech Mahindra. The management says that financial services business continues to deliver strong performance and the company's growth gems are well on track to achieve 5x growth. Let me go across to the MD and CEO of uh, Mahindra Group, Anisha. Uh, Mr. Shah, let me begin with the auto business. Q3 volumes coming in at around uh, 211,000, up 20%. Highest ever utility vehicle volumes at 119,000. But the order book has fallen sharply quarter on quarter. Uh, this has been a big concern. Going forward, what kind of demand momentum do you see? Uh, Parashit, good morning. And uh, we are very happy about the results this quarter. With regard to the order book specifically, uh, this is a positive actually. First, in December, we always uh, prune down the order book. This is something that uh, is a regular feature in the auto industry. And uh, second is that because we've been able to increase capacity, that has brought the order book down. In fact, our goal is to bring it down even further so that we can bring down wait times. One of the biggest challenges we face today is that uh, consumers have to wait a long time for our vehicles. That has come down with the order book coming down and with our capacities going up and uh, that will come down even further. So that will enable consumers to get cars faster. We're seeing very good demand for them. We're seeing very good growth numbers. And therefore, the focus for us is really to drive growth, to be able to deliver the vehicles to the consumer uh, on a timely basis and uh, therefore have a manageable order book. Right. Now, speaking about the market share, the market share in the auto business uh, though you're not in the CNG segment, entry-level cars or sedans, but the market share has been around 9 to 10 percent for several months now. How do you plan to increase the market share here onwards and what will be the pillars of this strategy? So for us in the SUV segment, the market share is 21 percent, even though we don't play in all the segments of SUV. And we're number one from a revenue standpoint. So we're the largest SUV maker in India today. Uh, in addition to that, as we look at LCVs, we have a 49.6% market share. Uh, and that has been steadily increasing over the last uh, few quarters as well. So we are playing in the segments that we want to. And uh, we feel that we can have uh, very strong differentiated products in these segments. Hmm. Uh, just speaking about uh, the farm business, it has been under stress. Uh, the farm equipment sector margins have been down 80 basis point. The revenue has been uh, flat as well. Uh, the guidance on the tractor business is also not positive at this juncture. Give us a sense of the stress that you see in the farm equipment seg segment, the tractor segment, and your outlook for the coming quarters. So there has been a lot, uh, Parishit talked about uh, rural distress, but we are not really looking at it as distress. If you look at it over a slightly longer time period, uh, just over the last three to four years, the year immediately after covid the tractor market grew 27%. Uh, so if you look at the average growth over that three to four year time period, it's, it's fairly reasonable. Uh, this year is going to be, in our view, negative 5%, but that also is a function of uh, some of the festivals and Navratras coming around March and April uh, are impacting it by a few percentage points. And uh, overall, yes, this is a slightly slower period in the farm business for us. Uh, but it's something that uh, really doesn't concern us. Margins for this quarter, as we explained yesterday, have been impacted by a certain one-time impact. Uh, but margins have been, again, fairly good and steady for us. And uh, it's one business where we have seen in the past cyclicality. 
uh, and this is part of uh, a cyclical downturn in a sense, but this cyclical downturn is far lower than what we've seen in the past. Right. The farm business is uh, currently generating an EBITDA loss of 20 to 30 percent, according to certain reports. When do you expect overall farm business margins uh, to return to normalcy and uh, when do you see improved operating performance? So the farm business margins are not that far from normal. Uh, if you look at a margin trend, they have gone up a lot. And uh, what we have also shown in our analyst meeting yesterday is despite uh, some of the volatility we see in the industry over the past many years, uh, we've been able to keep farm margin fairly consistent. Uh, so we are just uh, probably about 50, 70 basis points away from our normal. And uh, that's not that far a gap. In fact, we should be able to increase it as we go forward as well. Right. Now, speaking about uh, the, the demand for automobiles, coming back to the SUVs once again, what kind of demand do you expect in rural versus urban? And uh, do you see a moderation in demand for SUVs? Are you seeing a, some, sort, some sort of uh, uh, moderation in demand overall across the industry? Uh, we have not seen much moderation, which is, I guess, a function of the models we have and the strength of those models. Um, we do keep hearing about moderation across uh, certain parts of the economy, but we haven't really seen that. So, as I say, for us, we're not really seeing uh, anything around rural distress or anything in that sort. Uh, we, we are seeing a fairly reasonable market overall. Right. Uh, now, coming back to the regulatory ecosystem, this is also a year, uh, this calendar year, when you're really going to push ahead with your electric vehicle strategy, the Bond EV strategy. And you also told us in previous interviews that you may bring an EV to the market, uh, another EV to the market earlier than uh, expected. But looking at the changes in the ecosystem which are being discussed right now, the government is keen to have the likes of Tesla, Windfast here. There is a new EV manufacturing policy that is being discussed, essentially uh, giving duty concessions to companies who commit to manufacturing in, in India in a two to three year time frame. What would be your view on this? So Parikshit, our message to these companies is, if you believe in India, then make in India. It's not fair to consumers if uh, companies just import from outside without a commitment to the market especially in the auto industry, where the consumer would look for a commitment that the company is going to be with them for a long term for the duration that they have the car. Mm. India today also is in a very strong position globally. And we've got a very strong focus on make in India. And that really should be the path forward for us as we go towards a much stronger economy. We've got a large number of foreign makers in India, the auto industry has been a very competitive one for the last 20, 25 years. And at Mahindra, we've actually benefited from that competition. The cars that we make today are world class. The models that we've delivered over the last few years have been beating the others hands down. And uh, as a result of that, we welcome competition. So we would welcome folks to come in India. But our basic message to everyone is, if you believe in India, then make in India. Right. Now, if they are given duty concessions, uh, how would this impact the local industry? Uh, companies like yours who have invested heavily in localization and capacity building over the last few years. Uh, as I said, we compete very well. And uh, our sense is that uh, Make in India will prevail because that's really what the economy needs. And uh, we shall see where that goes. All right. Now, speaking about the uncertainty and future of fame, uh, if stopped right now or extended only for a two-year period as being proposed by the Ministry of Heavy Industries currently, how will this impact the industry? Though we've not seen the final contours, there is only a proposal that has gone to the Finance Ministry and we're awaiting clarity. So on that, uh, we will have more details only when we have that clarity. Uh, so we'll wait for that and uh, we can have a conversation at that point. Right. Uh, is hybrids a model uh, that you would be considering as you focus heavily on EV transition? So we are ready with hybrids. In fact, we had to make a choice whether we go ahead with hybrid uh, or EV or both. And uh, the choice we made was to go with EV because hybrid is really an extension of ICE. Mm. Uh, if you look at uh, the benefits of hybrid, on it has uh, slightly higher fuel efficiency. Uh, emissions are more or less the same. And 
the cost is higher. Mm. So hybrid doesn't really change the game as electric does. Mm. Um, the EV ecosystem uh, will have a significant change, a much better set of products, uh, much lower operating cost, emissions are close to zero or, or zero as such. And therefore, that's really going to be the path for the future. Uh, that requires uh, some incentives which the government has put in because a number of things have to change for that. Uh, that will have some hiccups as we go on as well as we've seen in economies around the world. But we also have seen economies where uh, the EV share is 90% now. Mm. And uh, therefore, that is the future for us. And that's what uh, we feel is the right place to go to. Mm. Right. Uh, so that, that's been our plan so far. If, yeah. if consumers want hybrid, we will give them hybrid. But for us, that's really an extension of ICE. All right. Now, speaking about tech, Mahindra, uh, what is the company doing in terms of review of operations? What measures will this entail to ensure growth? Uh, the company has reported a 60.6% year-on-year drop in net profit at uh, 510 crore for Q3. So TechMinder is really going through a reset here because a number of things have to change. Uh, we have a new CEO, a new chief operating officer. There's been a very significant revamp in the organization structure uh, to focus on core operations as a key strength that the company needs to build. It's always been very strong from a customer standpoint and the operating strength will add to it. So the path forward for TechMinder is really to uh, excel and perform ahead of its peers, uh, and that is a path that we are on right now. I call it a turnaround path, similar to what we did for Mahindra Finance, which we started about a year and a half ago, and that is working very well. Uh, Tech Mahindra with the new team in place, we have all the confidence that that team is going to deliver on that turnaround path that's set out for them. And finally, any possibility of reducing the workforce? When do you expect to return to profitability for TechM? Uh, TechM is profitable already. It's just a question of profit growth. And uh, that is something that uh, we expect uh, starting uh, the immediate fiscal year in uh, any case. So it's about strong execution on TechM. It's actually a company that uh, has been built well, that has a tremendous amount of strengths. And uh, as we've gone through what I call a reset here, it's really to make the company stronger. All right. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Shah, for joining us on the program. And with that, it's back to uh, Sonia and our markets team in the studio.